So Headley and Bennett sent us this new apron, part of their new Deadly and Bennett collection in partnership with Grateful Dead. It's pretty awesome. It looks like these skeletons are having a party. But you know what they say? You can't have a party without a surf and turf quesadilla. Let's get started. First up is the turf. Somehow turf refers to a steak. So we're gonna get this steak marinade going. We're starting by roughly chopping up one jalapeno and we're gonna toss this into our bowl here. We're also gonna add in some onion. We'll slice up a quarter of an onion here. And as you can see, we're gonna add the rest of it to this small bowl to save for later, since we're also gonna be making a roasted salsa verde for this dish. The next ingredient to go in the bowl will be some cilantro. We have just about a handful here. Uh, as you can see, I'm not really big on measuring things, so just add as much as your heart desires. We also save the rest of that cilantro for the salsa. Next up is some garlic. You don't have to be this violent when smashing it. I clearly took it a little bit too far and we lost a few good cloves along the way. Same thing with this. We're gonna add three or four cloves roughly chopped to our marinade and then we're gonna throw the rest in that bowl for the salsa. Next up is the lime juice. I have one really juicy lime. And if you're not this lucky, you might need two limes, but throw some lime juice in this bowl. It'll add plenty of flavor and a kick of acidity that we need for this marinade. For the seasonings, we're gonna add in our new fajita rub we're working on. It's not quite ready to be sold yet, but you can use what we've mentioned in the past, which is one tablespoon each of salt, pepper, cumin, oregano, chili powder, cayenne, and paprika. Add those seasonings to the bowl, and next up, we're gonna add some olive oil. Add a cup or two of that, and then we're gonna add in a cup or so of soy sauce. Of course, you can find an actual written recipe for this in the description below. Give that a good mix and let's grab our turf. The turf we're using is gonna be skirt steak. Throw this steak in a Ziploc bag and give yourself a wide opening so you can pour this marinade in without spilling anything, which I've been known to do. Be sure to squeeze all the air out of the bag before closing it up. And if you've seen any video where we're marinating something, you know how important it is to me to work the marinade into the meat. There are many, many ways to do this. But regardless, we need to make sure every inch of this meat is covered in this flavorful marinade. Now set that in the fridge for a few hours or optionally up to overnight. Now it's time to work on this salsa. We're going with a salsa verde, which is a green salsa. That is made using tomatillos. And if you don't know what a tomatillo is, it's basically a little bitty green tomato wrapped in a vegetable blanket. Very cute and very flavorful. We're gonna place them on a sheet tray with a few jalapenos. We're gonna roast these. I typically would roast them over charcoal, but I don't have the time, so I just turn the broiler on. While that's heating up, we're gonna drizzle them with olive oil. We're gonna stick it under the broiler and be sure to keep a close eye on these. Once you start seeing a little bit of char, turn them over to get each side charred up and then you're good to go. And now it's time to blend. We have this handy dandy blender here and I use this all the time. Carefully place your tomatillas in there and be smarter than me when doing this. Obviously these are still really hot so use some tongs. We're adding all of our tomatillas and we're gonna have to blend some stuff up before everything will fit in there. So we're gonna take that cup of onion, garlic, and cilantro from earlier. Now, I told you we're gonna be using that again so I hope you didn't throw it out. Now we're gonna place a lid on this, grab the handle and plug it in. Unfortunately, the cord is about six inches shorter than I need here for this to be on camera, but you should get the idea. We're just gonna chop this stuff up. You don't really need a cinematic shot in order to know what to do, I hope. And of course, as usual, I'm gonna spill some because that's just what I do. I make messes. Now that we have room for the rest of the ingredients, we're gonna add in our jalapenos. I don't want it too terribly spicy. If you do, add in everything but the stem. For me, I'm just gonna cut the sides off and then toss it in there. Now we will season it with salt, pepper, and a bit of sugar. The sugar really balances out the acidity in this dish. Everywhere you look, you have something acidic, and this bit of sugar makes a big difference in my opinion. We will finish this off with the juice of one lime. Since we have the tongs out already, we're gonna use that to squeeze the lime juice out. There's a little kitchen hack for you. Now just blend this up. I do think it's important for you to taste this once you're done blending it. See if it needs anything like salt, pepper, sugar, some more lime juice, anything like that. But if it tastes good to you, you're good to go. Now we are finally at the surf, the cooler part of surf and turf. And unfortunately, the waves on Kentucky Lake don't get big enough to actually surf, or I probably would have shredded a few waves and then caught some fresh shrimp myself. Since that's not the case, we're gonna have to use frozen shrimp. Ideally, you want large fresh shrimp, but we just don't have that luxury here where I live in Tennessee. We have a pound of shrimp. We're gonna hit this with some lime juice and our fajita seasoning for about 20 minutes while the grill is warming up. Give this a really good mix, and after 20 or so minutes, we're gonna skewer these shrimp. To me, the easiest way to do this is by laying them out on your cutting board like I have here. 
We will then place not one, but two skewers down the shrimp. Having two skewers allows us to easily flip them without the shrimp turning on their own. These are medium sized shrimp, which makes it harder to skewer. So just be careful and don't stab yourself. Once we have both skewers, I'll hit them with a light sprinkle of our fajita rub before heading out to the grill. Our skirt steak will take a little bit longer than the shrimp, so we're gonna start with that. We're grilling it over very hot, direct charcoal. This won't take too terribly long, but be sure to use a thermometer to make sure you're gonna cook it to your desired doneness. For me, that's medium rare and maybe even a bit closer to medium than I normally would just with this particular dish. After the steak is nearly finished, we're gonna add our shrimp. These will only take a few minutes on each side when you're cooking them over direct heat like this. Once they're done, remove them, and we're gonna finish the quesadillas over this grill grate flat top. You can certainly use a skillet inside, but this makes for a really large flat cooktop, and with our grill being hot already, this is a much easier solution. Let that start to heat up while we cut up our steak. It is now rested for about 10 minutes, so we're gonna slice this thing open. I'm opting for little bite-sized pieces, so I'm slicing it into strips and then slicing those strips into small pieces. With something like a quesadilla, I prefer the smaller size. Now we're back outside and we're gonna build this quesadilla. Use any cheese you like. I shredded my own white American. I wish I could get some good Oaxaca cheese or something like that, but I just can't find it here locally. Anyways, use whatever cheese you want. Fill this with your steak, shrimp, and your salsa verde. Obviously, I'm gonna add a little bit more cheese on top and then I'm gonna fold it over. Now let's get some butter on this hot cooktop. Get this thing all nice and buttery and then we're gonna lay this quesadilla right on top. I wanna be sure to press everything down really tight when I first lay it on the grill top. Since I'm using this butter like a glue stick, I'm gonna go ahead and butter the top of this tortilla so it's ready once we're ready to give it a flip. As with any cooking method, some spots are hotter than others. We have this in what I would call the medium high area, and I'm gonna move it to the hottest part for a few seconds before we flip. If it's too hot, the tortilla will be ready to flip, but the cheese hadn't had long enough to melt. Find that balance that allows us to cook in a minute or two and still melt that cheese. Once it looks like this, we're ready to flip and repeat. After another minute or two, let's remove this and get ready to slice it. And if this is done correctly, you'll be able to have that perfect golden brown crust just like this, with the inside all melty and gooey. Kinda like me. Let's give it a try. It's just so good. Mm. That's it for this video. As always, be sure to subscribe to our channel and give this video a like. Join me in the comments and let me know what you want to see us cook next. Be sure to follow us on Instagram and TikTok to see more content. And as always, thanks for watching.